Hey everyone, Mr. Fransky here. Um, today we're going to talk about implicit differentiation. This is 3.7 in your textbook. Um, and let's just jump in and see what we got. So we're going to start off with a little bit of a review of some of the chain rule stuff we've been working on. Uh, so first I want you to try some kind of more abstract differentiation here. So um, the first couple here, there's an f of x in the problem. So there's going to be an f prime of x in your answer. The first one needs a product rule. Second one needs a product and also a chain rule. And the last two here are some review on chain rules. So if you want to try this, uh, you can try it on your own and then we can try it together. So I'm going to jump right into these problems here. If you want to pause the video and try it yourself, you can. So the first one, derivative of x, f of x. So it's definitely going to need product rules. So remember, we do the derivative of 1 and leave the other one alone. So I'm going to do just 1 times f of x, because the derivative of x is just 1. And then plus, this time I'll leave the x alone. And I'll do the derivative of f of x, which is f prime of x. Just like that. Okay. So you could write that as just f of x plus f plus x, f prime of x. Either way, right? the 1 doesn't have to be there if you don't want it. So the next one, this guy, when I do the derivative of f of x squared, I'm going to have to use chain rule. So when I do the derivative of this, I'm going to have to use, so product rule is like my outside most thing that I'm working on here, right? Because we have a product of two functions, and then as I'm doing the derivative of the f of x squared, I'll have to use chain. So it's going to be 1. I'm going to leave the f of x squared alone. And then plus, this time I'm going to leave the x alone. And I'll have to multiply by the derivative of f of x squared. So I'm going to do with the outside function first. That's 2 f of x to the first power. And then we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is just f of x. So f prime of x. There we go. Okay, so again, the like product rule is like the the outermost thing that I'm doing here, right? So I did one times the derivative, or one times just f of x squared alone, and then I added to that, leave the x alone, and do the derivative of f of x squared, which requires chain rule. So I move the two to the front, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside function. All right, derivative of cosine squared root x. So you might have to rewrite this like this: derivative of cosine root x quantity squared, like that, to see really what's the inside and outside function. So first thing I'm going to do is take care of the most outside function, which is the square right here. So that's going to be 2 cosine root x, right? Just leave the inside function alone. Now we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is cosine root x. So that's going to require a negative sine root x, right? Because we're chaining again. So we're going to have that root x as our inside function now. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is root x. So that'll be 1 half x to the negative 1 half. So we could write this, pull the negative out to the front maybe, we want to write this a little bit nicer. So we could have a negative 2 cosine root x, sine root x, uh, divided by 2 root x. You could even cancel the 2's out if you want, but we don't have to do algebra, so I'm going to stop right there. Okay, but this top one will be fine too. This one's got a whole lot of chain going on. So let's see, our outermost function is the cube. So we got to deal with the cube first. So we're going to have 3 times 1 plus sine of cosine of x squared. 1, 2, 3 to the second power. So we've dealt with the 3 now. Now I have to do the derivative of my inside function here, which is going to require some more chaining, I think, at least 1, maybe 2. So let's see here. We're going to have times. Uh, the derivative of sine is cosine of the cosine of x squared. So now we've dealt with the innermost function. Now I've got to multiply by the derivative of the inside function, which is cosine of x squared at this point. So that's going to be sine of x squared times 2x. Whew. All right, make sure I got my parentheses closed. I think that's all I need. So let's make sure that I did it right. So the derivative of the inside function, the, outs, the outermost uh, function there is going to be cosine. So we have cosine. The derivative of 1 is 0, right? So we ignore it. So we have cosine of cosine x squared times, oops, I messed up, because the derivative of cosine is negative sine. I should have a little negative in there. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x squared, right, because we have the baby function alone. Key, we keep having to chain, right, and then we multiply by 2x. That's the last thing we have to do, because the derivative of x squared is 2x, and we're done. Not too bad. All right, so today we're going to look at implicit differentiation. And implicit functions is something you may have seen in pre-calc. Uh, but basically, if you look at this, if we graph this, you can graph this in Desmos, uh, and I'm going to show you a graph of that in a second. But if you graph this, it, it does create a graph. It's a relation. But notice we've done a bunch of things to y. And you may know, like, if you graph, like, y squared, these do not create functions, right? It makes, like, sideways parabola, not a function. When you, when you change things with y's like this, generally, it's not going to create a function. So let's take a look. And I think I've got it right here. 
Yeah, so we've got our, um, our x cubed plus y cubed minus 9xy equals 0. I'm going to turn that on. And we see we get this thing that is definitely not a function, right? It's kind of got this loop-de-loo in there, right? If we zoom out, that's really the only in interesting part of the graph. The rest of it kind of approaches a line as x goes to negative or positive infinity. Uh, but if we zoom in, we kind of have this interesting loop right here. And what we're going to focus on today is what might we ask about this loop? Well, what have we been focusing on all of Chapter 3? What if I wanted to find a tangent line here? Right, a tangent line at like, it looks like 4, 2 is a point on there. Um, or what if I wanted to find a tangent line like right here? We could find tangent lines at different x, y points. And that's what we're going to be interested in doing today. So I think it kind of already gave it away because that graph is right there. But so the question is, you know, like if I wanted to make a tangent line like here. Okay, so it's going to depend on x and y, right? Because if I only put in an x, there are two different spots that I could be talking about, right? And they have different tangent lines. So you have to think about what the x and y coordinates are. And just like before, we need a point and a slope. That's all we need is a point and a slope. So the way we're going to do this is um, we're going to ask, how do we find this dy dx, right? So how am I going to find the derivative of this function? So the process for this is the same every time. You're going to derive both sides with respect to x, Derive both sides with respect to x. Okay, I'm going to make a little flow map here. Okay, so that's the first thing we do is we drive both sides with respect to x. Now, what does that mean? Well, really what's going on here is y is a function. Y is a function of x. And if you learned about this in pre-calculator, these are implicitly defined functions. If we think about this, we're good. This, this would create a function all the way if we think about swooping through like this, it would be a function all the way until I get right to there, right? If the purple line is all we think about, that's a function, right? It passes the vertical line test. But if I go any further, it's going to double back on itself. It's no longer going to pass the vertical line test. So it's like my second function. Let's do it in red. I'm good until right here, right? The red line would pass the vertical line test all by itself, but combined with the purple, it wouldn't. And then we need another color. Let's do blue. So then the rest of it, once again, is OK. So really what we have here are what are called implicitly defined functions. There's three functions in there. Um, and at any point, y equals f of x could be the function that we're focused on. And so what we're doing here, implicit differentiation is going to allow us to say, let's just take the derivative in general, and then we'll see if we can find it at different points, if we want to find it at a specific point. So what's happening here is y is a function of x. It, we don't know which function we're working on at any given time. But that doesn't matter, because the derivative is going to work um, for any one of them. Go back to our purple. Okay. So since y is a function of x, when you derive both sides with respect to x, x cubed is easy. It's just 3x squared, right? But when we have a y, the weird thing is, because it's a function, just like we had in our bell work, we're going to have to chain that. Really what that is is it's uh, f of x quantity cubed. So the 3 would come to the front, reduce to a 2, and then we have, to, we have to chain by multiplying by f prime of x. So this is what's going on. So this is the second step, is you have to use chain rule. Whoops. Use chain rule on all the y values, on all y's. Okay, so every time you have a y, you're going to have a y prime there. All right, I always do it with y prime. I know some teachers do it with a dy dx. You'll see me always use a y prime. I like the Newton notation. But if you want to write a dy dx, or maybe you saw it in AB calculus or something, you have 3y squared times dy dx. I like a 3y squared times y prime. So because that y is a function of x, we're deriving with respect to x. That means that the x is like the variable we're focusing on. The x's will derive normally. The y's will have to be careful of. And if you have an xy like this, you'll have to use product rule, all the rules we've been learning, right? Next thing you're going to do is you're going to get all the y primes by themselves. So factor out all y primes. Okay, and I'll do an example. I'm going to do this exact example on the next slide. I just want to kind of get our process here first. And the last thing you do is solve for y prime. That's an L, I promise. <laughs> solve for y prime. There we go. All right, so let's try it with this function. Or this, it's not a function, this graph. Okay, so we're going to find dy dx. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do the derivative of both sides with respect to x. So on the left side, we have 3x squared plus 3y squared. Now we have to chain on all the y's, because y really is a function of x. So we multiply there by y prime. 
and then minus 9. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the 9 and minus 9. I'm going to do product rule on this xy. So the derivative of x is just 1. So I'll have 1 times y plus, now I leave the x alone, and take the derivative of y. Now the derivative of y, if you think about it like an x, the derivative of y would just be 1. But then we have to change, so we have to multiply by y prime. So anytime you have a y by itself, it's just the derivative is just y prime. Because it's f of x, right? So it's an f prime of x. The derivative of 0 is just 0, right? If this was like a 5 or something, it would still be 0, right? Because it's a constant. Whatever is on the other side, we also have to derive. We'll see some more of that in later examples. All right, so now let's go back to our procedure. So we derive with respect to x. Now we're going to use, we use chain on all y's. Now we're going to factor out all the y primes. So we're going to get the y primes all on one side, basically. So I'm going to do an extra step here that I probably wouldn't normally do. I'll distribute that 9 in there. So we have 3x squared plus 3y squared y prime minus 9y minus 9xy prime equals 0. So what I'm going to do now is get all the y primes on one side. They're already there. I'm going to move everything else to the other side. So right now we have 3y squared y prime minus 9xy prime, because it can be all the y primes on the left. On the right, we'll have a positive 9y and then a minus 3x squared. Let's make sure I got all my terms. 3x squared, yep, 3xy squared y prime is there. Negative 9y went over here, and negative 9xy prime is there. Now we factor out the y prime. This was our step, right? So we have factor out of y prime, y, 3y squared minus 9x equal to 9y minus 3x squared. So now if we divide, we would have y prime, so we're solving for y prime, equal to 3y minus 3x squared divided by 3y squared minus 9x. And that is our derivative. Now, something new you'll notice about this. There are x's and y's in the answer. That's because what we talked about, right? There are two spots when x is like 3, right? There's there and there. Okay, so you need to know what the y coordinate is as well to be able to know which of those two tangent lines you're talking about, right? But this will give the slope at any point on this. As long as the xy pair is on the graph, you can plug in the x and the y, and it'll give you the, the uh, slope at that point. So, little challenge here. Um, AP often asks this question, where is the tangent horizontal and where is it vertical? So remember, horizontal means the slope is equal to zero. Vertical means the slope is undefined. And we have some point like, points that happen on here, right? It looks like right at zero, we have an undefined slope. Look at that. If you plug zero in, what happens? Well, zero, zero is the point, I should say. If you plug zero, zero in, you get zero on the bottom. You also get zero on the top because we also have a horizontal tangent there, right? It happens at two different times, which is kind of weird. But also over here, we have a vertical tangent. So basically, the vertical tangent's going to happen whenever the bottom is zero. So when you're dividing by zero, that's when that's going to happen. Horizontal tangents are going to happen when you have zero on the top. So zero on the bottom would be whenever 3y squared equals um, 9x, right? Because uh, they'll cancel each other out. So it's like that happens one time over here. You'd have a horizontal tangent whenever the top is zero. So number three y is equal to negative or equal to three x squared. So that'd be whenever x is equal, x squared is equal to y. Kind of cool. Okay, we'll see some more problems with that, especially when we start doing AP problems with these. We'll see that. So let's do another example here. Okay, so we're gonna find dy dx. We got a, kind of a combination of all kinds of stuff here. So on the left side, we do the derivative with respect to x. We'll just have two x. How about that four? Well, that's a constant, so it goes away. On the right side, negative 8 over y. I'm going to think about that as negative 8y to the negative 1. So when the negative will come to the front, I'll have a positive 8. Derivative of y to the negative 1 is going to be y to the negative 2, right? Because we negative 1 came to the front, we reduced it, and we have to change. So we always multiply by y prime. Because y is a function of x, right? We're not driving with respect to y, we're deriving with respect to x, and y must depend on x. So we have plus, derivative of cosine is negative sine y, and because it's a y, you got to multiply by y prime. Hopefully you're catching on to this. Every time there's a y, you got to have a y prime there. Then minus 1 half y to the negative 1 half times y prime. Okay, hopefully you're still with me. Now we got to get all the y primes together. They're already on the same side, so I'm just going to leave the 2x over here, factor out a y prime. We're left with 8y to the negative 2 minus sine y, minus 1 half, I'll leave everything the way it is, y to the negative 1 half. We'll fix it on the next step. So now we solve for y prime. So I'm going to switch sides here because I like the y prime on the left. So we'll have 2x on the top. On the bottom, 8y to the negative 2 is 8 over y squared, minus sine y, 
and then minus, this is 1 over 2 root y. There we go. Solve for y prime. Let's see what we got next. Another example. This time we're actually going to get a line. So we're going to get an equation for the line normal to x squared plus xy equals 10 at x equals 2. So remember, for a tangent line or a normal line, we need a point and a slope. I'll write this up here. So our point, and then we'll get our slope. And kind of see if we can follow, solve for these and then write them up at the top. So the point, we know x is 2. We don't know y. Well, just like before, you plug 2 in and solve for y. So if you plug in 2 here, you get 4 plus 2y equals 10. Subtract 4, you have 2y equals 6, so y must be 3. So our point is 2, comma, 3. Now for the slope, we're going to have to find uh, y prime. So let's do it. Implicitly derive both sides. So we have 2x plus, so we've got to use product rule on the xy. So we're going to have 1 times y plus x times y prime. Right? Because it's x f of x, just like we had in the bell work. Right? Instead of an f of x, we have a y, but it's just because it's easier to write. Now on the right side, what's the derivative of 10? 0. A lot of people will write 10, but derivative of a constant is 0. So now I'm just going to leave the xy prime on the left. The right side, we're going to have negative uh, 2x minus y. Now solve for y prime. We've got negative 2x minus y divided by x. And there is our derivative. Now where do we want this? We want this evaluated at the point 2 comma 3. Remember that vertical line means evaluated at. So that's going to be negative 2 times 2 minus 3 divided by 2. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7 over 2. There's our slope, negative 7 over 2. That's the slope of the tangent, I should write that, right? And we want the normal line. If we want the normal line, then the normal slope is going to be positive 2 sevenths. Line, y minus 3 equals 2 sevenths times x minus 2. There we go. I don't have this one ready to go on Desmos, but if you want to, you can graph this, uh, this equation, x squared plus xy equals 10, and also graph the line, y minus 3 equals 2 7 times x minus 2. It should be tangent at the point 2, 3. Come and yell at me if it's not. I think I got one more. No, I have two more. So we're going to graph the equation for, or find the equation for the line tangent to x plus 2xy minus y squared equals 2 at the point 1, 1. So first let's see if 1, 1 is actually on the curve. We plug in 1 for x, 1 for y minus 1. Is it equal to 2? Does it work? 1 plus 2 is 3 minus 1. Yep, it's 2. So it's on the graph for sure. Don't always have to check that, but it's not a bad idea to make sure that the point that you're using is actually on the line, or on the graph. So we've got our point. We need our slope. Derivative of the left side, derivative of x is 1 plus 2 times, I've had some people ask, can you do the 2x? Sure. If you think about 2x as one function as y as the other, you can do that. I just prefer to pull the, the constant out and then do the product rule on the xy. So derivative of xy is 1 times y plus x times y prime. Lots of practice with product rule today. Then we have minus 2y y prime. Right. So what I did there is I moved the 2 to the front becomes a 1, and then we have to change. So we multiply by y prime. That's equal to 0. Let's distribute the 2 in there. We'll just do this right. So we have 1 plus 2y plus 2xy prime minus 2yy prime equal to 0. Let's see if the y prime is on the left. So we're going to have, and I'm going to factor it out at the same time. So I have y prime times 2x minus 2y. Oh, 2y. Equal to, move everything to the other side, we'll have negative 2y minus 1. Solve for y prime, just divide. Negative 2y minus 1 divided by 2x minus 2y. There's our derivative. We're going to evaluate that at the point 1, 1. So we plug 1, 1 in there, we're going to get, uh, let's see, negative 2 minus 1 divided by 2 minus 2. Uh-oh. Looks like the bottom is 0, so we have negative 3 over 0. This is undefined at 1, 1. Now, some of you might be like, oh, well, that's it, doesn't exist. But let's think about it. This must mean that at 1, 1, at 1, 1, we have some kind of a vertical tangent. I don't know if it comes from the right or from the left. You, if you graphed it, hopefully you, you have a picture of this. But that means we have a vertical line. Well, if it's a vertical line that goes through the point 1, 1, it must just be x equals 1. There we go. I'm interested to see that graph, 
I'll take a look at it after I'm done with the video, but you should look at it yourself. Graph it and plot that point x equals 1 and see what you get. This one I do have ready to go. So if you graph x squared minus xy plus y squared equals 7, it makes an ellipse. Uh, right here. So here we go. Look at that. It's kind of like a sideways ellipse. And what we want to do is we want to find the tangent and normal at negative 1, 2. So negative 1, 2 is right here. Looks like that is indeed on the graph, right, or on the, on the ellipse. So we're looking for a line. Looks like it's going to have a positive slope, maybe close to 1, right? But let's actually find out what it is. And then the normal line would be going the other way, right? So let's see what we got. So uh, to do this, we're going to have to find the uh, derivative, right? We have the point. We have to find the derivative to find the slope. So derivative is going to be 2x. This negative is the bane of a lot of people's existence. I just leave it negative, and then I'm just going to do the derivative with product rule, but make sure you use parentheses. You could think about it as a negative x and a positive y. I prefer just to pull out the negative and just do the derivative as a product rule. So we're going to have 1 times y plus xy prime. We've written that like six times today plus 2y, y prime, equal to, what's derivative of 7? 0. So let's, derivative, let's distribute that negative sign. So we have 2x minus y minus xy prime plus 2y, y prime, equal to 0. A lot of people drop those negatives. Don't do that. Don't be that person. So let's see here. Uh, let's keep the xy primes on this side. So I'm going to rewrite this a little bit. So I'm going to have y prime. I'm going to rewrite this so I have 2y minus x and keep things positive, equal to, we're going to have y minus 2x. So y prime, y minus 2x, divided by 2y minus x. That's kind of a nice little symmetry there. Our point is negative 1, 2. So we're going to evaluate it at negative 1, 2. That's going to be 2 plus 2 on the top. And on the bottom, we're going to have, what, 4 plus 1? So that gives me 4 fifths, which is pretty darn close to 1, right? We said we thought it was going to be close to 1. So that is the slope of the tangent line. So let's use our point slope for the tangent. So the tangent line is going to be y minus 2 equal to 4 fifths times x plus 1, right? Because it's minus negative 1. So then our normal, normal line should be y minus 2 equal to negative 5 fourths times x plus 1. Let's graph those two lines and see if it works y minus 2 is equal to 4 fifths times, whoops, over there, x, what was it, plus 1? Oh, thank goodness. Looks like it's tangent. You can see that one little gray dot right there. That tells us that uh, it is indeed touching just at that one point. That's kind of cool. So then I am hopeful for our second one. Uh, so we have y minus 2 should be our normal line, equal to negative 5 fourths times x plus 1. And there's our normal line. And we see that they meet at a right angle, and they both touch at just that one point on the ellipse. Very cool. That's a good problem. I think that's the last one I have for you in this one. Uh, if you go to the next video, I've got an AP problem that um, you can check out. Um, and, oh, I, I have a little challenge here. So uh, what are the equations for the vertical and horizontal tangents? So similar to what we had before, you can figure out when the top is going to be zero, when the bottom is going to be zero, and we can take a look at it and see. It looks like there's going to be uh, horizontal tangents at two spots and vertical tangents at two spots as well. So um, if you want to take a look at that, uh, try that out. Uh, they're going to actually be points on the line y equals 2x and uh, y equals looks like one, negative 1 half x, something like that. Um, but if you want to try that with me, you can uh, come find me. We can give that a shot and talk about what those points are going to be. Otherwise, I love you guys. That's why I'm here. Hopefully you learned something about implicit differentiation, and I'll see you in the next video.